Welcome Class of 2023 to our post-secondary planning program. You will be hearing from several counselors as well as our Director of School Counseling throughout this presentation. We will be sharing information with you that will help guide you through the post-secondary planning process. So junior year is here. This is such an exciting time in your life. As counselors, we are here to support you. We want to make planning for life after high school a positive experience for you and your family. Our department is fortunate to have close working relationships with colleges and admission representatives. We visit campuses and keep current with admission trends. We meet as a department regularly to share ideas and information to best help and support our students and families. This is what we know to be true. In our experience, students who have been successful throughout this process have some things in common. They have started early, stayed organized, made plans, and openly communicated with their school counselor, parents, and admission representatives. These students are dedicated to their research and realistic in their approach. To the juniors listening, it's always important to remember that this process starts with you. Step back for a minute and ask yourself some important questions. What are your needs, your strengths, your interests? You will hear your counselor use the word fit a lot throughout this process and it's important that you really think about this as you build your list of schools. Know that there is not one perfect school out there for you. There are many. Also ask yourself the question, what do these schools have to offer me? It's easy to jump ahead and rely on the college list of a sibling or best friend or only apply to the popular schools at the moment. Instead, really reflect on what you need and want as a student, both academically, socially, and personally. Open communication with your family and school counselor is a crucial part of this process. They have valuable insights, so keep an open mind. Sometimes it can be helpful to plan specific times to discuss this process as a family, as it otherwise can become all-consuming and stressful. We've had parents tell us that they set aside one or two days a week to have these conversations. Remember, you are more than just a student applying to college. You are also a friend, son or daughter, athlete, community member, and we want you to enjoy and celebrate these parts of your life throughout your last years of high school. In addition to open communication, research is one of the most important pieces in finding your fit. There is a lot to learn through the research process, so it's best if students are driving this process. As research takes time, we suggest that you follow the junior and senior time frames that we have provided you to stay on track. These time frames are also available on our school counseling website. Creating an action plan with specific dates and deadlines for yourself will be extremely helpful. The good news is you've already started doing this work. As sophomores, students were reintroduced to Naviance, our web-based college and career planning tool. Students completed the personality and career interest inventories. We also encourage students to start building a resume through Naviance. More recently, we invited students to our junior mini groups to dive deeper into the resources available through Naviance as it pertains to the college search and application process. So how do you find schools that meet your needs? What's listed on the slide are some important factors that will help you narrow down your search. You might not have all the answers right now. Your thoughts might change and that's okay. This is a good place to start. We encourage you to ask yourself some of these questions. Do you have a major in mind? How far away do you realistically want to be from home? Does the size of the school matter? Is there something that the college must have, such as a sport or a certain club or activity? What's the academic rigor of the school? And finally, what are your financial needs? These are all important conversations to have as a family. Once you've made some decisions on some of the factors to consider, you can now turn to your resources 
to help you search for schools that may be a good fit. Naviance will be a valuable resource to you throughout the post-secondary planning process. You will hear more about this in a minute, but know there are several college searches you can utilize to help you create a list of potential schools. Mrs. Miller in the College and Career Center is another outstanding resource. She will sit with students individually to do a college search, and she can also provide valuable career information. Visiting college campuses is a great way to see firsthand if the school is a good fit for you. So if possible, get out there and see as many schools as you can. In addition to taking the official tour, also go eat in the dining hall, visit the student union, talk to students on campus, and if possible, sit in on a class. We encourage you to attend college fairs. These can be very worthwhile events. Often, the person representing the school at the fair is the person that ends up reading your application. The same is true for college admission representative visits. When college representatives come to Glastonbury High School, whether in person or virtual, definitely attend. This shows interest and you can learn a lot about the school in a small group setting. And finally, refer to college websites often. In this ever-changing process, this is where you will get the most accurate and up-to-date information on all of your schools. There are a variety of resources available to you as you begin the college search process. Naviance offers both Supermatch and the Advanced College Search, which allow you to narrow down criteria that are important to you, including location, programs of interest, and school size. After narrowing down your search, a list of colleges will be generated that match one or more of your specified criteria. We encourage you to investigate these schools further by clicking on the individual college or university name. If you find a college or university that is of particular interest to you, please click on the heart to the right of the college name to save that school to colleges I'm thinking about. Included on each individual college or university page will be data including general university information, student life, and admissions criteria. We will take a closer look at this on the next slide. In the fall, admissions representatives will visit Glastonbury High School to provide students with information about their respective university. GHS students will have the opportunity to register for these visits through Naviance. We strongly encourage students to meet with admissions representatives to demonstrate interest in the university and learn more about the offerings of the various schools they may be interested in. Naviance is a wealth of information and provides general info regarding the student population, average net cost, programs of study, and admissions criteria. We encourage students to navigate through each tab to help determine whether the university is a good fit. To learn more about any institution, please visit the university's website listed below the institution name on the top of the page. One of the most helpful aspects of Naviance is that it allows Glastonbury High School students to compare themselves to other GHS students. Please remember that this scattergram is simply a tool to compare evaluative data from one student to another. There are a variety of factors that are considered when determining college admission. A student's cumulative grade point average is frozen at the end of junior year meaning the GPA earned at the conclusion of 11th grade is the GPA that will be reflected on the student's transcript. The scattergram can help determine the likelihood of a student's admission and whether that particular college or university is a reach, target, or safety school. Although numbers are important, it is not the sole determinant of college admission. College admission representatives will examine the student's high school transcript closely, including course rigor, grade trends, and performance in core academic courses. We will send senior year grades, so it's important to continue strong academic performance throughout your final year of high school. Many colleges and universities have transitioned to test optional, meaning they will consider standardized testing if it's provided and will focus more heavily on other aspects of a student's application if it is not. It's important to know whether the colleges you plan to apply to are test optional schools for the upcoming application year. 
Typically, SAT and or ACT scores are balanced with a high school transcript. If a student's GPA is higher than the average GPA a college is looking for, a college may be more flexible with lower SAT scores. It's important to speak with admissions representatives directly for more information about how SAT and or ACT scores are considered in the admissions process. Students will have the opportunity to write their college essay in their English classes during their junior year. The college essay is a unique chance for students to connect directly with admissions representatives, so it's critical for students to provide more detail about who they are. We typically recommend that students ask two teachers in different disciplines to write a letter of recommendation for them. The teacher should be able to speak to a student's strengths as well as their personal character. Students should plan to request letters of recommendation from their teachers in May of this year. Lastly, admissions committees will consider a student's extracurricular involvement outside of the classroom, including school-based clubs and activities, community service, and employment. It's critical that students provide a detailed description of each area of involvement on the college application. It's important to note that some colleges will track demonstrated interest, whether it be through campus visits or interviews with admissions representatives or alumni. If you're interested in a particular college or university, we recommend that you take advantage of all opportunities to connect with that school. As we all know, times have changed over the past couple of years. However, even though you may not be able to visit a college or university in the same way you have in the past, there are more opportunities to visit a school virtually. Many colleges offer virtual campus tours or virtual visits with admissions representatives. If some of the colleges you're interested in offer an on-campus tour, we strongly recommend you take advantage of it. Getting yourself on campus allows you to get a better feel of the university as a whole. You also want to make sure you see what the surrounding area is like. Is the college in the middle of a city? Do most of the students live on campus? Or do they leave on the weekend? What is the food like? These are all important aspects of a university to consider. After meeting with an admissions representative, it's important to send a thank you note for their time. Not only is it a polite gesture, but also demonstrates your interest in the university. Testing is a reality of the college admissions process. The two tests that are generally used by college admission offices to gauge a student's suitability for entrance are the SAT or the ACT. Both tests are universally accepted and students should consider which testing format is best for them. The SAT tests students on reading, writing and language, and math. The ACT tests students on English, reading, math, and science. The biggest difference between the tests is that the ACT has a science portion, whereas the SAT does not. All juniors will take the SAT as part of the state standardized testing requirement, commonly referred to as the Connecticut SAT students will have the opportunity to test during the school day on March 23rd. The scores that students receive on the Connecticut SAT will serve a dual purpose. They are used to satisfy the state's requirement as well as a score that can be used for college admission purposes. GHS will sign students up for the test, so no action is needed from students or parents at this time other than the student's attendance on testing day, March 23rd. To register for any other testing administration beyond the Connecticut SAT, students are required to visit collegeboard.org or the ACT website. You will set up an online account if you have not already done so and register for an exam of your choosing. Please pay close attention to registration deadline dates as space is limited. A few other considerations worth noting. College admission testing scores are not reported on the Glastonbury High School transcript. It is the student's responsibility at the time of admission to contact the testing agency and have their official scores sent to the schools that they are applying to. 
students with a documented disability that allows for testing accommodations will be able to enter their eligibility code online when registering to take a test. These tests can be costly. Fee waivers are available for those who qualify. Please reach out to your school counselor if you think you may be eligible. There are testing optional schools for students that don't feel their testing is an accurate measure of their ability. You can refer to the website fairtest.org to see what schools have a testing optional policy. We recommend that all students prepare for testing. Both College Board and the ACT have free test prep on their websites. College Board has a partnership with Khan Academy to offer free SAT preparation. Students that link their PSAT scores get access to tutorials and practice questions tailored to the areas that that student needs to work on. In addition, there's a daily practice app where students can view sample questions daily and receive immediate feedback. ACT Academy offers video lessons, interactive practice questions, and personalized study plans. Moving on to a slightly different topic, we would like to review the different application deadline options. Every college sets their specific policy we would like to outline the most common options. Early Decision is a program that allows students to apply early, and if accepted, you contractually agree to attend. Students are only permitted to apply to one school utilizing the Early Decision option. Early Action is a program that allows students to apply early. Students will receive an admissions decision early but are not contractually obligated to attend that school. Both Early Decision and Early Action programs have deadline dates as early as October or November of senior year, and students have an admission decision by December or January. Rolling Admissions. These schools tend to review applications on a rolling basis as they are received by the school. They tend to have a four to six week turnaround time for decisions. Regular application deadlines tend to be set in January or February with notifications happening in March. It is important to review the deadline policy for each school you are applying. Some have additional priority deadlines for specific majors, programs, or for scholarship purposes. We want to briefly outline who is responsible for which items when applications are being submitted. Generally speaking, students are responsible for submitting their application, application fees, and testing scores. Additionally, students will submit their college essay and request first quarter grades for schools with that requirement. If recommended or required as part of the admission process, Students will need to schedule college interviews. The school counselor will be responsible for submitting an official transcript and high school profile. They will also submit first quarter grades if requested by the student. Additionally, the school counselor will submit their letter of recommendation and teachers' letters of recommendation. School counselors will again outline this information for families at their individualized planning meetings this spring and again for students in the fall. Hi, this is Mr. Gregorski, Director of School Counseling. The information that has been shared with you in this iMovie was put together by your school counselors to give you the important topics and timelines you will need. This information will be reviewed with you in the coming weeks and months as we move towards graduation. Not to worry, we are here to support you in any way we can. In the next few weeks, your student school counselor will be meeting with them to go over the course recommendations by their teachers for their senior year. If there's a particular elective that you want to take, make sure you let your school counselor know. Looking ahead to the spring, we invite you to make a junior parent meeting appointment with your student school counselor. In those meetings, you will be setting up some timelines around the college application process 
but more importantly, will be provided an opportunity for you and your school counselor to be on the same page about post-secondary plans. The next year will go very fast. It's important to remember that you are the one that is applying to college. We are here to support you in any way we can. Communication is key during this process. Please reach out and ask your questions you have or update your school counselor on your plans. Please be reminded to check your email regularly. One of the ways we will be communicating with you is by email, so make sure you are checking your students' emails for messages, information, or updates from your school counselor. Please remember, we're here to help you in any way we can. This is an exciting time, but it's going to go very quickly. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out. Get going, and good luck.